I'm talking completely off message, so I'm the cuddly investor that I told you earlier, but thank God, given Jeff's conversations about VC, I am talking about a side project of mine, which looks like there's sort of a theme today. Sebastian, Pia, me. The internet is awesome because it gave us speech to everybody, a kind of a natural extension of the democratic premise, democratizing who gets to talk. Plus, it gave us an extraordinary array of opinions, which in the old days, when only dukes and trade unionists get to uh, write in the papers, we didn't get. But there's a problem. And the problem is not that some ideas or some people shouldn't get the chance to voice themselves, but in our, in our focus on ensuring democratizing speech, we've in a sense focused on the, on the people doing the speaking rather than on the speech themselves. I said, oh, that took too long, that slide, so I'm just going to ignore this pretty picture, right? Um, but to repeat the point, I think we've focused on the people doing the speaking rather than the speech itself. Why? In an internet, in an, an ad-based internet economy, all, there's much more value in understanding who's doing the speaking than in actually what they're saying. And so that same, based, same, same web has given us all the tools available to talk. Interesting question without an answer. Huge cultural push towards around this obsession to democratize who gets to speak. And at the same time, an internet economy which makes all its money from our propensity to, to speak. Whichever comes first, who knows. But we've, we've bought the core premise that there's an infinite number of opinions, an infinite number of people sharing those opinions, and the value is in mapping them against themselves. But that's a big porky pie, as we say in the UK. It's a big lie. Because in fact, and this shouldn't be controversial, there is in fact a finite number of opinions about everything. There is a, there is a profoundly limited number of relevant and, opinion, and, and important arguments. This baby, billions of words spilt about this. Newspapers, radio, the pub, mostly the pub with him. Um, and, um, but I reckon that all of us, on the back of an envelope in five minutes, could have written the pros and cons of Brexit. And if you can map Brexit like that, you can map the pros and cons of trade barriers. You can map approaches to North Korean denuclearization. You can match the advantages of Lionel Messi over Ronaldo. And so here, core premise. If there is a finite number of arguments around any core subject, you can map it. And if you can map one topic, you can map all topics. And if you can map all topics, you should, in theory, be able to structure those topics into a gigantic argument map. I'm not talking about debate libraries. They exist. I'm also not talking about argument mapping tools. They are legion, and they require patience, and they make your eyes bleed. What I'm talking about is, so the, I'm talking about a kind of an architecture of ideas, a, an encyclopedia of opinion. I've put Diderot, the 18th century encyclopedist up here. We've got his modern counterpart in the audience with us. So imagine an architecture of all opinion structured in the way that opinion works, which could be then played out potentially on its own browser, on its own, on its own platform, across chatbots. I think of audio. I think of in-newspaper. Why? Three reasons. One, I think that um, this could potentially give real context to the news, allow journalism to give context to the news. Like explainer journalism, kind of ex an extension of explainer journalism, but for the kind of the intellectual context around where these ideas come from. Two, I think that it can help people understand what they think, which is, should be a core responsibility of journalism. Not just figuring out how they think and what they think, but also working out whether their, their opinions match up, whether there's any kind of consistency in their thinking. And two, and three, sorry, I can't count. I think that it should also um, help people to listen to each other. Another absolutely fundamental responsibility of journalism, it seems to me, and one of the things which strikes me here is that the proponents of certain ideas are the very worst people at explaining those ideas to their opponents. They, in a sense, need translation. So, I'm here, this is not a pitch, this is an ask. One, like Aaron yesterday, I want to know if this is a terrible idea, and I want to know as soon as possible, because, um, because this has been annoying me for a good couple of years now. Two, as I say, I'm the cuddly investor. This is a night project of mine, so if any of you are interested in 
helping, I would love that. Three, I'm desperately looking for some media partners who may be interested in working out how we might play with taking this to market on a new site. And four, I get to talk because I'm the last one here. And four, if I need a name. Right now, this thing is called Parli, P-A-R-L-I, like Parli, like speak in Italian, .co. Please sign up. But, um, but if you find anything better, come tell me. Thank you so much.